Good morning, everyone. This is a live June the Groomer. Okay, well, shoot. Hopefully, I'll drop my phone. <laughs> that is a big drop. Oh my goodness. All right. Um, I wanted to do the two dog analogy because I just got done combing half of the Lily here. Lily is a beautiful Maltese. I did comb both of, both sides of her face here, her muzzle, because you know. She's kind of a diva. She's a beautiful, she knows how beautiful she is. She refuses to work on camera unless I comb out her face and make sure she looks presentable. So her face is all combed out. All the cruddiness and everything is all combed out. But anyways, this side here is combed out, right? So this fine tooth side of the comb, hey, what's up, Tansen? So this side of the comb can go through, right? Kind of easily, there's still a little bit of dead coat. But on this side, right? It cannot, it can't budge, even on the ear. Right here, definitely, look at that, see? Even the core side here is not really gonna, hey, what's up, Crystal? But see, look at that, it's not gonna budge, even the, the wider side, right? Because if you look, under the top coat, look at that, there's all of that <laughs> just bundled up dead, undercoat right because it's winter time see right now even it's dark it's dark right now if you look outside it's kind of raining and dark so the days are getting shorter and so in response to the sun this undercoat here all of this webbing underneath see those balls all of this right here there's another one the, oh my goodness look at that so all of this right here is just tangled up because it's like Velcro. It's just dead hair, but it's at the skin level. So that's why when you go through with the comb, it's not gonna budge because it's gonna get tangled up on these. See that? On all of the... So what I did was I sprayed it. Some of the areas with Banix, you know, like around the feet and the paws, and even here, it can now comb through, right? But on this leg here, it's not gonna budge. Look at that. Because on the legs even, it's the same thing. If you look underneath, look at that. There's something gnarly right there. I just felt, where is it? There it is, look at that. This ball of something. But even at the skin level, I saw this little, little, it's like bead, little grain of sand kind of, little black thing come out of her skin where there's a little bump. And now it's smooth on the other side. But see all of that there? And that's why when you go through with this comb, even though I'm going underneath the top coat, it's getting caught on that undercoat that's all like webbed, intertangled and webbed up underneath. So the two dog analogy, let's say there's two Maltese that came into a shop, a grooming shop, right? Um, I see her every three weeks. So she gets combed out every three weeks and I doubt she's getting combed <laughs> in between. And she's kind of, she's usually not this, She's usually not this tangled up. She's this tangled up because of it's winter time right now. And the, it's the, in response to the sunlight and how, you know, they call it the photo periods, the intensity and duration of the sun. That's what triggers their undercoat to change out. Um, because we buy fresh clothes and we stay fresh. They grow their clothes from their skin. And so we have to comb out their older hair She's barking at somebody. So you didn't buy tickets to the show. You don't get a free show, right? I'll block it. I'll be your bodyguard. I'll block it. There you go. They won't see you, girl. You don't treat a diva that way. Just get free, free shows and stuff. Anyways. <laughs> so let's say this dog, both Maltese comes in every three weeks, right? One Maltese gets combed out like this, right? And now this, the coat is actually smooth and silky. I combed out the tail. So both Maltese are going to get a smooth, silky, soft tail. <laughs> but um, let's say one Maltese gets combed out before the, before the bath. Oh, they're, they're leaving. They're leaving. They heard you, girl. Man, that was close. Almost got, a, got another paparazzi or something, right? <laughs> okay, she's cool now. She's cool, they're, they're gone. So now this Maltese here doesn't, hey, what's up, Amy? Let's say this Maltese doesn't get combed out. I did comb the top coat here a little bit, but down here there's lots of dead coat. Let's say this Maltese, and she doesn't like it either. She was kind of, you know, whining and protesting a little bit on the other side, but now I can go through on the other side and then, you know, no problem. But anyways, let's say this Maltese, see, doesn't get combed out. And all of this, 
all this thick coat under here that I can feel, and you can see. Let's say she just gets washed in it, right? So this Maltese gets uh, washed and gets dried and everything turns out really nice. This Maltese, I'm gonna have to work harder to actually get the coat to stay wet. And then I'm gonna have to work harder to get, use more shampoo product even, to get a good lather in. And then all of this is gonna be tangled up even more because I, you know, lathered it, shampooed and rinsed. And then when you dry, it's gonna get it tangled up even more. And it's gonna take longer to dry. It's not gonna dry as nice as this one. And then let's say you use a force dryer and conditioners. Oh, like this one. This is a really nice one I'm using. Uh, Kin and Kind odor neutralizer, natural, organic, um, hand mixed in the USA. <laughs> I like that, nice little touch. But anyways, let's say you use conditioners and you blow it out with a force dryer, high velocity air dryer, you blow it all out. It's still not gonna get as good as results because the skin underneath here feel softer and smoother already. The skin is smoother. On this side, especially here on the back for some reason, they get rough here. The skin on this side is still bumpy. You can feel it like grainy sandpaper. On this side where I combed out, the skin is smooth, right? So you're gonna get much better results by combing them before the bath. And it's like removing your dirty underwear. So before I, oh. <laughs> This strand of hair is driving me nuts. So I was trimming my beard <laughs> and this strand of hair got in the way and I cut it and now it won't tie back and stay back. So TG says, hi June, what do you say to owners who want to help you wash the dog with doggy soap and get so matted? Exactly, so that's why I'm actually making this demo. I'm so glad you went there TG because I wanted to address that. I even met, I ran into a lady who has a doodle and she was going, she was at the self wash and she was about to wash her doodle. And she was like, oh yeah, my groomer does all the combing. And I was telling her like, you know, she was like, oh, how does your doodle look so beautiful? Cause I watched it Bailey. And I explained to her all of this combing that I did. I was like, it was, it took about two hours, two, three hours of combing. And I was like, it's, it's this combing that gives all the, the results. It wasn't the shampoo or the conditioner. And I explained that to her. <sighs> Get my hands to stop shaking here. I explained that to her, and I even used the chicken analogy you know, frying chicken and the brining time. And I was like, it's the time combing them, that's what really gives you all the results. And she was like, I just let my groomer do all that, I'm, I'm just gonna watch this. Is just in between. And I was thinking in my head, and her doodle was kind of long, and the hair was long. I was thinking in my head, that's why it gets shaved down, that's why your doodle, that's why your groomer shaves it because it gets all matted. So, for pet owners. For especially my clients, I encourage them. They don't, they don't always listen to me. What are you gonna do? You can't control people, but I keep encouraging them. Please, if you wanna help me, don't wash your dogs in between the groom because I know they're not gonna actually thoroughly comb them out the way I do. And I, so I just, please, if you, if you can help it, if you can avoid it, please don't wash your dogs in between the grooms unless you're gonna comb them. And combing them in between the grooms maybe once a week will really help me so much more than you washing them at home or washing them in a self-wash, you know? So I just, I wanted to just make that clear that if you're gonna try to help your groomer in between the grooms, comb your dog and then see that it's not even gonna, so I have to, Gently work it, you know, with the conditioner, spray some, spray some of that conditioner and gently work it. But if, you're, if you wanna help your groomer out in between the grooms, brush and comb your dogs. Don't wash them unless, unless they got skunked or they've rolled and rubbed in some dog poop during a walk or got really muddy, I understand. There are times when you have to wash them, you know, cause you gotta live with them, but if you can avoid it. Oh, look at my shadow like right there. Oh my goodness, that's like a parallel universe, huh? That's the other June back there. You don't wanna pay attention to that June in the reflect. <laughs> anyways, before I lose all my subscribers, like, like shoot. Okay, anyways, um, hope, I, hope I made that clear. TG, I asked her on my knees not to wash and come every three weeks. She agreed. Oh, <laughs> exactly, but we can only hope, you can only hope that you can get others to maybe consider a different way of behaving, but you can't control people. You can only control the way you respond to them. And the way I, re the way I see it, um, the, uh, the analogy that I like to use is the restaurant analogy. If I took my wife out to a nice, fancy three, Michelin three-star sh chef, you know, 
like a, like a really fancy restaurant. And I ordered a dish. And me, because I'm a country boy, <laughs> and um, you know, I grew up poor, you know, I don't know how to eat fancy dishes. So let's just say I'm digging in with my hands and just eating it, right? And the chef comes out and he's sweaty, you know, he's upset. Maybe not upset, but just kind of frustrated. He's like explaining to me wh how much work it takes to make this dish and how you're supposed to eat it and how I'm ruining tradition and culture and all this stuff. I'd be like, excuse me, get back in the kitchen. You know, like for you make me look bad and for my wife, you know, um, I wouldn't appreciate that. And so I, I kind of so look at it like that. My YouTube channel and my social media is how I share the information. And I, this is where I educate owners, pet owners who want to listen, um, but with my own pet clients, um, my own business clients, I, I, I just, I want them to enjoy the meal. You know, they don't know, they don't have to know how to order it. They don't have to know what goes into it or how to even enjoy it. They just have to know how to pay the bill, <laughs> right? And I'm just the chef. And so that's how I look at it with my own personal clients. Um, but this is how I kind of get it out there. And then I keep my fingers crossed. Hopefully one of my clients will actually watch this, you know, and oh, stop watching their dogs in between the grooves. But you can only hope, you know. You, you cannot change circumstances. You can only uh, control how you respond to what happens. And the best way to practice um, peace is to accept everything that happens as it happens to accept it. And acceptance doesn't mean resignation, just, oh, throw your hands up, oh, I give up. Acceptance means accepting the situation for what it is, and then just calmly d doing what you need to do to make the situation better, doing what you can, um, but calmly, not angrily, you know? So anyways, oh, she's like, are you, gonna, are you gonna continue grooming me or what? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Lily, man, I'm trying to explain. All right, you know. You know when you work with these, when you work with these beautiful models, you know sometimes they get demanding. <laughs> Anyways, I gotta go. See, I hope I hope this made sense. I know the presentation maybe. I hope it made sense. And Patty, thank you so much for joining. Oh, oh. let me see who else. Oh, chick that's uh, Nicole. Yay! Finally a Maltese demo. What's up, Nicole from Puerto Rico? Okay, so I think I said hi to everybody. Perfect. Thank you guys so much. I don't know why my.